And now I'm about to do something that I've never done on this show before. Calm down. It's not twerking. Calm down. Hello, welcome to this edition of The Guido Goes Off. Um, as I stated in the intro, I'm going to do something I've never done before on this show. I am actually going to review Backlash. Oh. Um, give my unique take on it. So, here we go. Okay, so even though you had a match with six a uh, card with six matches on a three-hour pay-per-view, um, you're running that risk. They still had a match on the pre-show and literally no build to it, um, and that match was between Baron Corbin and Apollo Cruz. Um, now, like I said, this you know there was no build to this. It wasn't you know, it was you know. And now it's only like a few, a couple days prior to the pay per view. Um, now bear this in mind: it was a solid match, and maybe something can be built from this. But the thing is, they've been having these backstage things with uh, between Cor at this backstage where uh, Baron Corbin's beating the heck out of Kalisto, and you know. Nothing's been built out of this. I mean, you had something ready to go to, that you could tack on the card and maybe have Apollo Crews you know, face somebody else. Or, I mean, okay, I understand you're trying to get stuff out there, but that made no sense. You know, Court, like I said, Corbett's been attacking Kalisto in the back, and nothing's been built out of this. So I don't know if Kalisto's injured or what, but um, like I said, it was a solid match, which I'm surprised. Um, now, I'm not a big fan of Baron Corbin. I don't think he should have left NXT. I think they, they still needed to develop. But he's that big guy, and we all know Vince is hard on for big guys. And he has fans. Don't get me wrong. Um, but it was a solid match. Um, solid effort by both men. And, yeah, that's, that's all really I gotta say about that one. Um... I mean, do I want to see something come up out of this? Yeah. But I also want to see something come up with those backstage beatings. I mean, why film them? Why put them on TV if you ain't going to do anything with it? I think, I think that's my issue with it. But again, a solid match, fun to watch. So let's get to the main card. So, after a promo by Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon, because reasons, we start the show, interestingly enough, with one of its most anticipated, with its pretty much its most anticipated match, the six, the, the women's uh, six-pack elimination challenge, um, where you had uh, Becky Lynch, Nikki Bella, Natalia, Carmella, Naomi, and Alexa Bliss. Um, all vying to be the inaugural SmackDown Women's Champion. Which you can tell is SmackDown because of the blue background. Anyway, um, now there, now there's still, now in the beginning it did get, you know, you did get some back and forth, but there was a lot of knocking out of the ring and having more individualized, um, interaction, um, you did have that storyline within the storyline of Nikki Bella and Carmella feuding, um, which oddly enough really wasn't played up. And, you know, Becky Lynch didn't really get a whole lot of time when everybody was in, which kind of screamed to me that she was going to win this match. Now, don't get me wrong, you, like I said, you had a lot of time on this card to fill. And for the first 10 minutes, there was no eliminations, you know, nothing, you know, just pretty much the establishing stuff. But then, like, but then it was like, boom, 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 like dominoes falling. Um, I believe it was how, uh, um, if you watch uh, Real Honesty, shout out John, there you go. 
you know, if you watch that show, you know, this is, that's what they mentioned, the dominoes falling. It was, you know, in quick succession, the eliminations came. I mean, first, uh, Alexa Bliss was eliminated, then Naomi was eliminated, and then literally, one right after another, Natalia and Nikki were eliminated. So then you had, you had Carmella and Becky left over, which pretty much screamed, Becky was going to win this. Again, you know, and then, well, that's what happened. Uh, Becky hit the dis locked the disarmor on Carmella because she got too busy taunting, pointing the finger. Yeah, you left that arm exposed. Becky took advantage, locked in the disarmor, and Becky Lynch is now your SmackDown Women's Champion. Now, before I get to the fan part of how I feel about that, I'm going to do the analysis part. It was good, but like I said, there was really no drama. You you didn't feel like, like especially uh, once the other four were eliminated and it got between Nikki and Carmella, you knew, there wasn't that drama. Like, Carmella felt like a threat to win this. I mean, she just run, you know, she'd like hit a move, run around and taunt, hit a move, run around and taunt, hit a move, run around and taunt. It, it just, just screamed, she's going to fuck up. She's going to screw up. And, and Becky's going to get her into the summer, and win. There literally was no drama. I mean, honestly, if... I mean, if I were booking this, I would have had it between, you know, like... You know, Nikki and Becky in the... as the last two. Because Nikki was more of a threat than Carmella is. Right? I mean, right now... Right now, that that's, that's how, you know, things seem to be. And like I said, it's, you know, there was no drama. There needed to be more drama. I think, and I think that was a theme going through this, this whole card, as I'll get to it. A lack of drama and a lack of, you know, impact. I mean, this is the first brand individual pay-per-view of this brand split. SmackDown had to come out of the gate strong. But I'm, okay, I'm digressing. But like I said, I mean, if it was Naomi or Natalia, or, sorry, not, not Nikki or Natalia, I'm, I'm sorry if some people are going to feel slighted, slighted that I'm not saying Naomi can add drama. It's, she's still trying to get reestablished after her injury. It's, like I said, from that standpoint, it, there, there needed to be more drama to that. You know, more of that, oh, Willie, 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 you know, keep us on the edge of our seats. It's just, you know, right, it was like, right after Nikki, I mean, if you looked at the betting odds, it was, you know, Nikki was the favorite, Becky was the highest of the underdogs, and went down from there. Now to the fan side. Clearly. It's great to see that Becky won. Becky was the only, prior to this, Becky was the only one of the horsewomen who hadn't been champion. You know, she never was NXT champion until she got called, when she got called up. You know. Uh, Overlord just ran by. You know, she... And, and ever since, you know, her booking has been, it's all, you know, they'll saying always a bridesmaid, never a bride. She's come so close, but yet, and within inches, and it doesn't happen for her. This was literally a must win for Becky Lynch. Um, you know, you've had, had all these close calls since she's, since... Um, since the unraveling of the teams in the Divas Revolution, 
you know, and when all these divas are fine. Or, ugh, sorry. Bad Guido. These women are on their own. You know, Becky has been come close, but has been overshadowed by the likes of Charlotte and Sasha. Becky got picked, and, and they, they kind of drilled this into our heads that Becky got picked first. She was the first woman drafted to SmackDown. So, you know, you had that, you know, she, you know, she was the first one drafted, and even then, her um, win-loss record was kind of not good. This was a must-win. It was either, if she didn't win this... It was probably never going to happen. And I talked to a lot of uh, fans of Becky on Twitter, um, and everybody's really happy. And, and to be honest, I'm really happy because, like I said, it's finally. It's finally Becky Lynch became a champion in WWE. And now she, you know, kind of, um, you know, kind of proves why she was drafted first. Why she's kind of face, you know, making her the face of SmackDown's women's division. Next match on the card was the Usos taking on the Hype Bros. Uh, the winner of this match would go on later to face Heath Slater and Rhino uh, to crown the to crown the inaugural SmackDown Tag Team Champions. Um, of course, the Usos have turned heel um, due to their attack on American Alpha. Um, gone is the face paint. Gone is the colorful costumes. And um, if you read my Twitter, I'm like, uh, okay. So, yes, they have bad attitudes, but they kind of look like those hoodlums that hang around the mall now, <laughs> as, as far as their appearance is concerned. Um don't get me wrong, it's probably a good change of pace that they turn heel. So they went on to face the Hype Bros. Now both these teams had been eliminated from the tournament. Uh, I, I, I think it's interesting that they did this instead of just, you know, I guess they wanted to cre help create drama for um, the tag team titles. So, um, let's say good back and forth going in. Um, it was... Um, solid, but you did see the Usos doing a lot more heel tactics, and again, that heel tag team, double team um, moves, pulling guys off the apron, you know, push them off the rope, the, the, you know, trying to establish them as the heels, and um, nice use by, um, I don't know which one did it, Jimmy or Jay, um, apparently, um, you know, once they you know, work the knee of Zack Ryder uh, using uh, the Tequila Sunrise. Um, I was not familiar with that move. Uh, that was uh, Conan's submission finisher. And it's, you know, it. and so the Usos win. They move on to face Heath Slater and Rhino. They then cut backstage to where Renee Young interviewed them. And then they went with the cheap humor with the poop jokes. <laughs> yeah. Where where Heath Slater was nervous and he'd uh, been going quite a bit. You know. I'm like, okay. Really. We went there. Really. But anyway, it was, um, you know, it was establishment of the Usos as heels. We're going to be naughty. We're going to be bad. We're going to do what it takes to win. Um, and again, high bros, good solid showing. So, onward. Up next, um, The Miz taking on Dolph Ziggler. Uh, defending the Intercontinental Championship. Um, now, they did have um, interaction with him in the back, with Miz in the back, with Dan Bryan. Um, 
you know, Miz uh, being cocky and arrogant, saying he wants to renegotiate his deal after he defend after he retains the title. So we go on to the match. Um, well, this was a pretty this was a, a pretty long match, which don't get me wrong, they had a lot of space on this card to fill. And although the crowd didn't seem to be into it, I'm not gonna lie, I was. Um, Ziggler showing more of that mean street, more he seemed a bit more desperate, and and I can understand. And it's you know you've been going far, you know pretty far in this, you know ever since the brand split when Ziggler was drafted to SmackDown. It just seems that Ziggy's desperate for that big win, and you know and that. You know, to reestablish himself as one of the top guys in WWE. I mean, you know, he had the match uh, at SummerSlam against Ambrose, which, yeah, you know, that could have been better. Also, better placement on the card. I mean, I think, I think it was like the third match on, on the SummerSlam card. And now you have him against the Miz. You know, Ziggler is desperate for that next big win. And it's clear he, you know, you know, character-wise, he feels he needs it. Um, and the minute, and the thing is also, ever since that promo he cut on Talking Smack, the Miz, even as a, even being champion as long, Intercontinental champion as long as he has, he seems to have that hunger back, character-wise. I mean, yes, he's still as cocky as ever, as arrogant as ever, but. He's now hungry to prove himself. And in that match, you know, both these guys wanting wanting to win, wanting to reestablish themselves, it showed. I think this, personally, I think this was, um, as far as, you know, everything you're looking for in a, in a wrestling match, this was the best match on the card. And I know it sounds, um, a lot of people are going to probably argue with me on this, and feel free to. But, like I said, I mean, this match this match went a while. I'm, I don't have the exact time on it, but this match went for a while. Uh, you had The Miz opening up the playbook, doing, you know, doing a lot more moves than he's um, been used to, and, you know, and Ziggler, and Ziggler kind of, you know, more trying to step away from was drawing his comparisons to Shawn Michaels and just being flat out Dolph Ziggler, which is what he's needed to do for quite some time. This, like I said, this match, um, in my opinion, was the best on the card. Um, which kind of made me wonder why they had to end it the way they did, uh, with Maurice spraying hairspray or something. Uh, in the face of Ziggler, and and then the Miz hitting the skull crushing family for the one two three. So Miz retains. He's going to be even more miserable, or he's going to be even more of a misery to deal with because hey, I would did this long match and I won. And then you're going to wonder, you know, it 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 makes great sense going forward. It made great sense. The, the match was great. Um, it leads up to hopefully more interaction between the two. And of course, you know, you've got Miz arguing with Daniel Bryan. Um, so you're going to have it. Like I said, th this not only was a great match for that card, but it can lead to more. So that's what, I mean. And, and feel free to argue with me. You know where I'm at. You know where you can find me. It's not that hard. I just think that this one was the best on the card. And it really helped um, both these guys in reestablishing themselves and, and getting their places on this roster. 